Situated on the ancient trade routes from the Atlantic Ocean, Ireland has seen thousands of vessels wrecked on her coast. For centuries, Dublin has been a busy trading port. Its approaches have proved to be extremely hazardous for shipping and became a graveyard for thousands of vessels. Not a merchant vessel, but there to protect the trade, the loss of the battleship HMS Vanguard was but one of them. Saturday morning in early May. Members of the Marlin Diving Club kit up and prepare for the journey out into Dublin Bay. Philip Oglesby has been with the club for 17 years. The Marlin Club was founded in 1981 and I joined myself in 1983. And by the, by the end of the season of 83, which is August, I was a qualified diver. <clears throat> I was always interested in, in diving. Uh, for, for a long time before I took up diving, I was very interested in watching television programs and so on. Philip is the lead diver on this outing. Seven divers will travel today. He has an interest in the numerous shipwrecks spotted around the entrance to the bay. 1986, the Maryland Tobacco Club did a project on a wreck called the Queen Victoria in Hoth. And that was my first experience of any sort of amateur in the water archaeology. And I found it absolutely fascinating. Over the winter, the club have been researching another wreck in the bay. Today is their first recce dive on the remains of the HMS Vanguard, which they hope to survey over the coming summer. The club is equipped with a powerful boat, and it's fitted out for long-range diving. The Vanguard is situated 14 and a half miles to the southeast of Dunleary. And this journey takes approximately 45 minutes. The principal reason for selecting the Vanguard was due to the fact that the diving community had a unique shipwreck on its doorstep, which was hardly dived on at all, and about whose overall condition there was relatively little known. Roy Stokes has been studying the history of the wreck. In the mid 1860s, we Admiralty were creating a new breed of warships and they opened a competition inviting uh, designs for a new battleship, a medium class battleship. A man called Edward Reed, who was a, a notable naval, naval architect of, of the period, won this competition and designed for the British Admiralty four very special battleships of the medium class. These were later known as an audacious class. The Vanguard, which is one of them, was um, built in the famous yards of Laird's at Birkenhead. Today the weather is perfect. There's little swell over the wreck and plenty of sunlight. The team have already attached boys to the bow, stern and midships of the vessel. On this dive, they will secure their boat to the midsection of the wreck and prepare to make the 48 meter dive. Okay lads, body check. Okay. Okay. Weights on. Yeah. Weights on. on. Okay. Air on. Yeah. Air on. Okay. How much air have we got? On the dive, a dive program, briefings are very important because everyone needs to know what everyone else is doing. The divers need to know before they go in the water exactly what that task is and how long they have to do it. Because we didn't have underwater communications, it's very important that we stick to our time schedules. The people on the board on board also need to know what time we're going to return at. Two together on my signal, ready, clear. The cameraman for the project is the well-known diver John Pear, who explains how he became interested in underwater filming. I got interested in underwater photography because I found it very difficult to explain to other people uh, what it was like in this other world that I was seeing. 
Uh, and with that in mind, uh, I decided to take up photography, really, I suppose, to uh, paint a picture of what was happening and to bring back this new world that I was seeing and found it very difficult to explain. The task chosen on today's dive is to examine some of the condition of the deck's main fittings. These brass and bronze pieces have hardly corroded at all and are in remarkable condition. Moving along, the divers record the size of the main anchor. The difficulties of filming the wreck are explained by John Pear. The, the biggest problem that photography presents is your buoyancy, trying to keep yourself buoyant. Uh, and by buoyancy I mean not to be touching the subject or the ground or the surrounding areas uh, that uh, you're trying to photograph. The capstan, which was used to hold the main anchor. Almost titanic looking, the bow was shrouded in old nets. And a rigging eye, used to secure the towering mast. My first dive to the Vanguard was really a test run to see what conditions were really like. I, I, I was amazed, first of all, with the darkness. So one of the big problems was lighting, and we had to make sure that the lighting that we had was effective enough in order to illuminate the subjects that we were trying to photograph. With some promising preliminary results, the dive team returns to Dunleary for further research and from where they will make their plans for the next dive to the wreck. Portsmouth, England, and the dive team obtain a unique insight to an ironclad battleship from the period. HMS Warrior. HMS Warrior, which accompanied the Vanguard on the day she sank, has been professionally restored and is now open to the public as a museum and hospitality ship. Some of the warrior's armaments have been superbly replicated, down to sidearms, which were stowed over the crew's heads. The muskets and cutlasses were intended for use by the crew when repelling or boarding an enemy vessel, and for shore engagement by marines. Measuring well over six feet in diameter, the warrior's main wheel assembly is similar to the one visible on the wreck of the Vanguard. Under certain conditions, it would require several strong men to steer these huge ships. Boilers, fueled with tons of coal by sweating stokers, could turn the Vanguard's unique twin mangan screw propellers, giving her a maximum speed of about 10 knots. Accommodation and places of confinement for sailors were basic and contrasted with the relatively lavish conditions of some of the ship's principal officers. As the team make their way back to Ireland, they reflect on the remarkable insight they have acquired from the loving restoration of an old ironclad battleship. In 1875, national unrest was beginning to worry Irish MPs, who had become concerned with the lack of sufficient naval presence around the Irish coast. The Admiralty responded by assembling a fleet of battleships to sail the colours around Ireland and to make calls on several ports. On the last leg of the cruise, they set sail from Belfast to Kingstown. Now, Dunleary. Towards the end of August, the Admiral, Admiral Tarleton, decided that um, a visit to Queenstown was required. 